imagine, if you will, an action figure line based on a popular fad that your father is into. Nobody has superpowers, there are no aliens or spaceships, and the only adventures these guys have involve getting their load delivered on time, avoiding both the police and a crew of thieves on the way. Hello and welcome to Vintage Mego. I'm Brian, and this is our look at the Mego CB McCall toy line. First of all, the backstory. CB, or Citizen Band Radios, were originally used primarily by truckers due to cost, and the average person really didn't need to have one. This all changed in the 1970s as the cost of the solid-state radios went down, and also the oil crisis caused a need for people to communicate where they could find gasoline for their vehicles. With a nation of consumers interested in trucker lingo all of a sudden, it began to ooze into pop culture. All of a sudden, there were movies like Smokey and the Bandit and Breaker Breaker. And while CB-related music began hitting the top 40, most notably C.W. McCall, a fictional character created by an advertising agency to sell bread, that had a hit song in 1975 called Convoy. Perhaps you've heard it. We got a great big convoy rocking through the night. We got a great big convoy. Ain't she a beautiful sight? Convoy. One thing toy makers like is when something's popular and they don't have to pay a license for it. All of a sudden there was CB related pajamas, bed sheets, model kits, toys, and it gave Migo the inspiration to create an action figure line. It's the CB McCall Rig and Trooper Car, each with make believe CB radio. Nine volt battery for each, not included. Fish, you hang your weight. Look out, Smokey, I'm coming through. This is the Masher, a tough looking tanker full of tricks. Each truck has swing open doors, tilt up cab, and 18 wheels. Get him, Smokey. CB McCall Rig, Trooper Car, and the Masher all sold separately by Migo. The Mego CB McCall line launched in 1977 and would become a series of nine action figures, three vehicles, and one playset. Let's go over the figures. For the CB McCall line, Mego released nine action figures. Three figures for three different series. The Good Guys, the Bad Guys, and the Smokies. Seeing as the line would include playsets and larger environments, Mego chose to go 3 and 3 quarter inch with the CB McCall action figure range. And yes, they used the comic action hero's body style that they had introduced in 1976. And I'm just going to say it right now and then I'd like to dismiss it. Yeah, I know about the hand thing. Good guys consisted of leader CB McCall, obviously a take on CW McCall. He is described as the daringest dude on the highway. His sidekick, Kid Watts, the teen trucker. And his pal, Jim Oaks, the Texas truck puncher. You really can't have a good road adventure without some sheriffs, and the CB McCall line had three of them. Sergeant Brown, the baddest bear on wheels, and clearly the leader. Scowlin' Jack Jones. King of the Smokies, and the singer of the Love Boat theme, and Speed Johnson, the Smiling Smokey. And of course, you can't have conflict without bad guys, and C.B. McCall included three of those as well. Professor Brain, the Mad Mastermind. Joe Marconi, he's two tons of trouble. And Bad Leroy, the One-Eyed Whopper. Okay, we'll just leave that there. All of the C.B. McCall figures were sold separately on cards similar to the Comic Action Heroes, and they included stands that were basically the Comic Action Hero stands. Some of the packaging and design was done by Harold Schull, who worked at Mego in the art department and designed things such as the Star Trek Aliens backer and the Micronauts packaging. However, select figures were also available with the vehicles, the real stars of this series. Each of the subcategories of the action figures received their own vehicle, the most important being C.B. McCall's rig. 
It is a bright red rig that has a tilting cab and a full-size trailer with doors that open and close. The best part of it, though, is concealed a broadcast amplifier. Kids just had to plug in the microphone with a 9-volt battery, and they could broadcast their CB lingo. Each of these vehicles came with a booklet of CB lingo for kids to learn. The rig came with one action figure, and that would be CB himself. The Trooper car was billed in the 1977 Mego catalog as a Tijuana taxi. The patrol car also had the CB accessory, batteries not included, and included two action figures, Scowling Jack Jones and Sergeant Brown. The third vehicle, and probably my favorite, is the Bear Masher. This is a renegade oil tanker that Bad Leroy and Professor Brain have stolen and rigged up. The front radiator actually becomes a battering ram, and the tanker has a secret panel that flips wide open, giving you the ability to kidnap other action figures. While this one doesn't contain the CB radio slash speaker system, it is kind of just really fun and reminds me of a lot of toys that would come out in the 1980s. In the 1978 Mego catalog, there was a listing for the CB McCall Highway Wrecker, which looks like it would use some of the tooling from CB's own rig added with a tow truck accessory. Sadly, this did not get made. The only extension the line got was in 1978, a playset emerged. It's not featured in the Mego catalogs, but it is featured in the Sears catalog, and I do have one with a Child World sticker, so it did get some distribution. The 24 by 26 inch playset included a simulated truck wash complete with rotating brushes, two brushes included. CB's rig always need a washing after those long, tough hauls. In case they get damage from a bear masher attack, there is a repair bay. You can get gas from the pumps, not really. And to pretend to fill your tires with the air hose. With your CB truck stop, you can now own the best running rig on the interstate. 10-4, good buddy. This is mainly a cardboard with a few plastic pieces scenario. It sold for under $10 in 1978. CB McCall was mainly sold in the United States. There are rumors of some pieces getting through Canada, and Grand Toys did advertise it in 1977, but we have never seen a Canadian package for CB McCall, so it's likely they just brought in some U.S. product. According to Mego President Marty Abrams, the line did well for a year or so. Former Mego VP Neil Cublin also stated in an interview that we thought the craze would last a long time, but it really didn't. It was a passing fad. These days you need to get three out of a decent line. Still, despite the lack of TV advertising and the passing fad, kids like trucks and CB McCall sold okay for two years until Mego discontinued in 1979. There was discussion at Mego about bringing back some of the tooling to do a BJ and the Bear line, but I don't think this ever got past the discussion stage. Mego did recycle some of the CB McCall tooling for other more popular toy lines. Most notably, the troop car and troop body parts were reused in the Dukes of Hazard line. And Professor Brain and Bad Leroy would become Jimmy Squeaks and Wheels Willy for the three and three quarter chips line. On the secondary market, CB McCall remains one of the most difficult lines to collect. Even though there's not a lot of players, it's just a very rare series. Most notably, the carded action figures are difficult. They don't pop up often. More commonly found are the rigs. Seems like a lot of kids kept them in their original boxes. And the playset, that's a real toughie. It is really difficult to find. I have been collecting CB McCall for about 20 years, ever since my friend Steve gifted me some figures. I'm still looking for carded figures 20 years later. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that keeps me going, the hunt. But I'm telling you right now, it's easier to put together a series of Star Trek aliens than it is a series of CB McCalls. So that's our CB McCall show. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you want to do me a 1033, please consider hitting like and subscribe to this video. We do this every week. Until next time, have fun and talk toys, not others. Take care.